Okay, and welcome back for some more lovely mathlicious maths. So, so far you've looked at three uh, graphing techniques for linear equations. You've been graphing by a table. You should now be able to graph using the slope value and a point on the line, but usually the y-intercept B. And you should also be able to be uh, graphing using the xy-intercept method. Now, a couple of things that cause a problem are the horizontal line and the vertical line. And you should think of these maybe as it, like irregular verbs that you learn when you're learning languages and they don't follow or seem to follow patterns of uh, methods that you've used before. And so basically you're just going to have to learn them and understand them and know them as a fact and their little anomalies and all their little properties. So first of all, we're going to do graphing a horizontal line, as you can see written here in the title. And we're going to look at the equation y equals 3. Okay, and we're going to try and graph it. Now I've got a little table here, uh, which is the, the simple way that you have uh, worked out points before. So let's work out some numbers. So when x is minus 2, what's y going to be? Well, y is going to be 3. When x is minus 1, what's y going to be? It's going to be 3. When x is 0, what's y going to be? It's going to be 3. I hope by now you have noticed a pattern. When x is 1, y is still 3. When x is 2, y is still 3. When x is 3, and in fact, any number you pick for x at all, y is always going to be 3. Now, what would that look like in the picture, in the graph? Well, let's plot the point. So, let's pretend 3 is here. You've got a point here, got a point here, got a point here. And as you can see, there's a horizontal line. Now, you should use a ruler, of course, and join these up. But because I'm a professional, I don't need to use a ruler. And, of course, you always write on and label the equation that you're doing. And there you go, graphing a horizontal line. Simple. Now, what you need to notice are the properties. So, let's see what we've got here. Well, first of all, you may notice that the line is flat. What is the slope number for that? Stop the video, have a little think, and then check to see if your answer is correct. The slope number, the gradient number, and the letter we use for that, M, should, you should have said it was zero. Okay, and you should have known that. Okay, what else can we look at this graph and what other property? Okay, you should be able to tell me what the y-intercept is. Or the b-value. Stop the video, decide what you think it is. When you're ready, turn the video on and see if you were right. Well, the y-intercept is when the line hits the y-axis. And this happens at the number 3. Okay. Now, let's look at the equation of the line. Here, you just have a y and a number. What's missing from this equation compared to the ones you've already seen? Stop the video, come up with an answer. When you think you've got an answer, press play and see if you've been a smart cookie. Okay, you should notice that there is a y and a number in the equation, but there are no x's. So why is that happening? Well, I'm going to show you. You know m is 0, you know b is 3. And we know the equation of the line is y equals mx plus b. And if I put these values in, you would get y equals 0x plus 3. And I hope you know your 0 times table. 0 times x is just going to be 0. So let's not write that part. And you get y equals 3. So that is why there are no x's in the equation. Now, if you get this straight away, y equals 3, if you know it's a horizontal line and it cuts through 3, you can just draw this. You don't have to bother doing this. Okay? So let's see if you really know. See if you can put on this graph where y equals 1 will be. Stop the video. Graph y equals 1 on there now. Then see if it's correct by pressing play again. Okay, so this time you should have gone to the place that is 1 on your y-axis and you should have just drawn a horizontal line, whoops, and y equals 1. 
It's as simple as that. Where would y equal 4 be? Here at 4, horizontal line. Where would be y equals minus 1? Minus 1 on the y-axis, horizontal line. Where would be y equals 0? Have a little think about that one. y equals 0. y equals 0 is actually a line that goes on top of the x-axis. Because that's where y is 0 here, and there's the horizontal line. So it lies on top of it. So hopefully now you know how, now know how to do horizontal lines. So of course, next we're going to do vertical lines. Okay, so this time it's x equals 2. Now normally you would put in values for x here in a table. I'm going to do it the other way around this time. You'll see y in a second. So this time... When y is minus 2, what is x? 2. When y is minus 1, what is x? 2. When y is 0, what is x? 2. I hope you have noticed there is a bit of a pattern. And in fact, whatever number you use for x, then you're always going to have the value x is 2. Let's pop it on the graph and see what happens. Okay, so um, 2 minus 2, uh, 2 minus 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. Again, you should be using a ruler now, but because I'm a professional, I can do it without a ruler, and I label the line. Let's see what we notice about this line. Stop now, and have a little think what you think is different about this equation and what you know about this line then press play when you're ready and we'll go through the three things you should notice okay here we go well this time we have a vertical line whoops vertical line that means that the gradient the m value is what we call undefined there is no number that exists to describe it. Secondly, um, do we have a y-intercept? Does this line cut the y-axis? No, there's no y-intercept. Doesn't exist. Three, what do you know it's about the equation? Well, there is x, a number, but what is missing? That's right. There is no y's. Now, why is this? Well, let's have a look. If we look at the equation again, y equals mx plus b, we're in an impossible situation. There is no y-intercept. So you don't put b is 0, because if b was 0, it'd be going through the origin. It doesn't exist. M is undefined. That is a number that does not exist. You cannot put a number that does not exist into an equation. So this equation, in this case, is useless for us. And what you need to remember is that the equation is always going to be x equals some sort of number. And so this is like I said, when you're learning verbs or foreign language or English language, certain verbs follow certain patterns grammatically. And some of them are what they call irregular verbs. And you're just going to have to learn it and memorize it. I'm sorry, but there's no other way to do it. It's like learning a fact, learning dates for social studies. Well, that's it. So make sure that you copy the notes down for graphing the vertical line. And make sure you put the notes for graphing a horizontal line in your notebook. And then we can move on to another video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.